Today we're talking Emersons. That's right. Got a sweet Emerson here. This is the uh, Horseman. That's right, this is called the Horseman. It is basically a Mini CQC8, and that's what people call this too, the Mini CQC8. But the official name's Horseman, and honestly, I can give a crap less about technicalities. You can call it whatever you want. Um, but <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Uh, it's called the Mini CQC8 by some people because that's literally what it is. Um, there's the CQC8, which stands for Close Quarter Combat, because all Emerson knives are pretty much decked out to be tactical folders and, you know, combative designs. Um, although most of us aren't soldiers and mercenaries and, and cops, we're, we're basically just uh, guys who like knives, and these are cool looking, so we get them, and they work, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, the pitch behind Emerson as a company is hard use tactical knives, okay? But, all that being said, and even though this thing screams tactical, particularly this one, because it's all blacked out, um, this was designed, really, for uh, horseback riders, all right? Cowboys. This is a cowboy knife. Doesn't look like a cowboy knife, does it? <laughs> but, uh, Ernie Emerson has a lot of experience, you know, grew up on a farm, a lot of horse riding and stuff, and he, he, he knows the importance of a good, usable, sharp knife, okay? Dealing with cattle and all kinds of stuff on the farm, Obviously, a sharp knife is a must, okay? It's like, uh, you know, a pistol to a police officer. You know, the plunger to a, a plumber. I don't know any other um, lame analogies, but it is very important, as you can tell. And uh, basically, of all the designs they have, he, you know, considered a, basically, the, the, hor the CQC-8 uh, scaled down to be the best design for a horseback rider. Now, I don't ride horses, so I don't have any experience with that. I can tell you, it's an awesome knife, whether you ride a horse or not. Uh, very, very cool. Um, I want to talk a little bit about their quality later in the review because this is a 2013 model, and I see some real differences in quality, okay, and all for the better. Ah, eh, what the hell, we'll talk about it right now. Um, I always liked Emerson Designs, always. But, you know, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, but more or less like 10, 15 years ago, when I really started getting into knives and stuff and, and started getting expensive knives, you know, I was never really impressed with Everson. I thought there was a lot of hype. I knew that they were cool knives. I knew they worked. But honestly, the fit and finish out of them was very shoddy for a very long time. But there was this cult following, and they always stayed strong. People would just, you know, just like, you know, Cold Steel or Benchmade or Spyderco or Emerson, there's hardcore people that just only buy knives from that company. And... There was such a following that it, it always stayed strong, but you'd constantly see threads on the forums of like, eh, you know, my lockup sucks, or this one's got blade play, or, you know, one liner is smaller than the other liner, and, and all this crap, you know, it's constant problems. Emerson stepped up their game. This is top notch, okay? This knife sells for 150 bucks. It is completely USA made, and that makes a difference in the price, okay? Don't be fooled. Sometimes you'll see an expensive knife. If it's made in the United States of America, it's going to be more expensive to produce, period. Okay, that's why some of the prices are a little bit higher. However, for $150, if, if you got this knife or, you know, an Emerson knife back in the day, I might question, hey, is it really worth $150? Especially today's uh, market, there's so many good knives in the $100 range that once you get over that, it's hard to justify those prices. You know, as far as like just talking about quality. There, there's always going to be this factor of, hey, I like that particular knife, that's why I want it, you know, and there, there, that's, hey, nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, that's practiced every single day by knife people. Sometimes you don't need to justify the price. If you want it, that's the price it costs, that's the price you pay. It's that simple. But my point here is that uh, I think this is worth every penny of $150, whereas the same knife made, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago might not be the case. Um... But yeah, I, I just really noticed the quality differences. Just, they've always been comfortable knives ever since, but like you'd see a lot of machine work. And like I said, sometimes shoddy lockup and stuff like that. This one's totally fine. You see, there's the lockup on it. It is a liner lock. Okay, they do use titanium for the lock side. And I believe they still use the stainless liner for the other side. And if you look here, it's gonna be very hard to tell in this video because it's such a slight difference, but there is actually a difference in color between both of those uh, metals, and that's because one's titanium and one's stainless. And uh, they use titanium for the lock side just because it's gonna be stronger, obviously. And uh, the other side is just for um, 
you know, structure. So it's not necessarily important to use titanium for that side. But uh, really interesting. Another difference I saw is that they use the standoffs on here as opposed to the backspacer. I am all for it. I love standoffs or pillar design knives, okay, free flowing knives. Pocket knives, you know, create a lot of, uh, you know, dust and, and dirt and it's not because we're dirty people, okay, it's just because there's crap floating around the air we don't see. And pocket lint, all kinds of stuff, you know, from the material moving around. You know, take out your favorite knife that you've been carrying every single day for years, take out your gun, look at all the lint in there. You've got to clean your stuff out, okay, most people don't. And, and it, you know, it's, it's common. It's not a big deal. Don't be embarrassed if you take your knife out right now. It's all linted up. Um, very, very common thing. Uh, in fact, one of my uh, uh, carry guns, I get linted all the time. And every time I go to clean, I probably clean it once a month. And, but I'm surprised. I'm like, holy crap. You know, I got to clean this thing more often because I don't even know if it's going to work with all that lint in there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I do prefer and like this quite a bit. I like the design of those uh, standoffs. Simple, straightforward, but... Uh, they're sexy looking. They work with the knife very well, and it allows for a free flowing design, which is easier to clean. So I'm all for it. Um, Emerson is kind of, uh, they're known for their G10. Their G10 cut pattern on here, one of the best in the marketplace, hands down. Um, it, but it is very much a love-hate relationship. Some people get a hold of one of these, they go, oh my God, I hate that. I don't like that at all. Uh, and other people love it. Um, it's really cool. It's like it's such a fine pattern in here that it feels like it feels like really fine uh, sandpaper. Um, like I don't know, feels 600, 700 grit sandpaper, something like that, right? And you can see if I drag my my thumb across, you can see how it skips. That's because it's really, really gripping in the skin. Um, but it's not uncomfortable. I mean, I can really rub my fingers on here and it doesn't hurt whatsoever. So it's an amazing balance of super grip without discomfort. And uh, I love it, it's awesome. Big downside, gets dirty, you can see. you know, And you can't wipe this stuff off easily because there's such fine cuts in there. Um, skin cells, you know, dead skin cells on your hands, dust, lint, dirt. You drop this on the ground for a second, all that dirt is gonna be packed in here and it's super hard to, uh, to clean. Uh, I mean, just, you know, brushing off, it's hard to clean. Obviously, you know, you take a, a damp sponge, you can wipe it down, you know, real easy. But um, if you're one of those freaks that, uh, and I mean that in a good way, <laughs> if you're a, a knife freak that just panics if uh, there's a, a dust molecule on your, your expensive knife, then uh, this one, probably not for you. This is completely a user knife. It could look dirty and ugly and nasty, but most people don't care who actually use their knives. But be warned, okay? This does collect lots of dirt and dust and lint, okay? But um, great trade-off because the grip is, you know, second to none. It's just really awesome. And Emerson guys know exactly what I'm talking about with that. Works well when wet, grimy, all kinds of stuff. It's just a really, really nice finish for, for G10. Um, very, very impressive. Something else for the newer model that I noticed is that they, uh, they have a wider channel cut out into these uh, screws. The pivot screw, the old ones, I mean, first of all, if, you, you know, if you're not familiar with Emerson, they've always used these flat head screws for the pivot. Now the idea is that you can take pretty much anything to adjust your pivot screw. Um, once again, the mindset of being maybe <clears throat> combative, um, you know, militant. If you're out in the field, you know, you don't have your torque set or your specialty wrenches, you know, you should be able to take anything and adjust that, that screw if your blade's loose or something like that, or if your blade's too tight, whatever the situation is, you should be able to adjust it with anything. A credit card, you know, coin, whatever. But they used to be kind of thin. And as they are right now, you can adjust your, your pivot pin with a penny. I like that they widen up a little bit. It just makes it a little more versatile, as if the, the flathead wasn't versatile enough before, even better now, okay? So I really like that slight, that's a very slight detail adjustment and I love it. Uh, if you notice, the body screws for the standoffs, okay, to take this knife off, Phillips head. Now, some people say this is cheap. Holy crap, those knives must be cheap. They're using Phillips head and flathead and, you know, come on, you gotta step up your game, get those cool screws, you know, like Microtech, when you gotta buy the, uh, the $300 friggin' bit to take your knife apart. Hey, I'm all for simple, and this is simple, and a lot of people like this, they really do. 
Some people see it as being cheap because they're so used to like other types of screw. Who gives a crap? Honestly, this is awesome. Um, I have taken this knife down apart once because I was very curious to see if these would strip. Small Phillips head screws, unless they're high quality, always strip. And you can see there's not even marks on them. Of course, I use the, the appropriate size uh, screwdriver, which makes a difference, okay? If you're using a screwdriver, a Phillips, and it's a different size and it's smaller than the screw, it, it could possibly strip. But when you have the right size, you can see there's not even marks on them. So very cool. So yeah, the, uh, the quality bumped right up. Absolutely love it. Awesome job, Emerson. Really, really cool. I got to check out some more of your stuff now, some of your newer models. I like the Bulldog, by the way. Uh, and that's only because I have a Bulldog, obviously. Now, I think the knife's pretty cool looking. But uh, yeah, anyway, all right. On to some of the more important stuff. <sighs> Let's see. I'm rambling. I'm having fun. You know, I, you guys know I love knives. I always love knives. But today, I've just been using a lot of knives and just really just having a great time. And, you know, that's why I decided I'm going to do a couple knife reviews today because I have a lot of stuff I've been using for a while that it's just time to talk about. But anyway, more on this knife. 150 bucks, USA made, um, top quality, you know, top-notch stuff. This is a liner lock, and don't be afraid of liner locks. I don't want people freak out. You know, liner locks are still strong knives. There is no blade play whatsoever in this thing. Now, when I got it, it was tight. I did have to adjust that pivot screw. It was so tight that I couldn't really flick it out. And now I have the perfect, ba perfect balance where... It's not loose. That blade doesn't just freely swing. Like some knives, you know, and this is totally preference. Some people, you know, if you got your Benchmade Axis Locks or whatever, you kind of take that lock pressure off and your blade's just swinging like, on, it's like it's on polished glass. You know, this is not quite that type of knife. However, it is very, very strong when it locks up. And at this point, you know, I can flick it out. So I have no complaints there whatsoever. Um... What else? What else? Uh, flat ground blade. You can see. Uh, I know people are all into, you know, their convex grinds and their full flats and everything else. Uh, it, just by looking at this, if you're a kind of a knife snob, you go, oh man, you know, that thing, that's not going to cut very well. That's not very, uh, it's kind of steep and the grind. And it's a chisel grind and people don't like chisel grind. Eh. Ah, this thing cuts like a laser. It's awesome. It really is. And I'm not a fan of chisel ground blades. I'm just not. I like symmetry in, in all aspects of life, even my edges. Um, yes, it makes sharpening easier because obviously you're only sharpening one edge and then you're just knocking the burr off the other edge, or the other side rather. But uh, I just, eh, you know, not my thing. But uh, what I want to focus a little bit on right now is those serrations. Now, as I said, I got this model because I've never used their serrations. Now, I'm not a fan of the small parts of those serrations those tiny little cuts i don't like them because it's so easy to snag on things you know material these don't stay sharp that long i'm, I'm not just this knife. i'm talking about any serrations once they dull up it, it's a huge problem because it, it's so ineffective and it's so hard to get that factory edge or, or or sharper with serrations i know people who've been sharpening knives for 30 years and they still can't uh, sharpen serrations you know perfectly so that's why a lot of people stay away from it. Not necessarily because they don't like the way they cut, because a good, sharp, serrated blade will cut the hell out of stuff. Um, but people don't like having to resharpen them. So I felt that this serration pattern is actually really good. Even though these are small, they're still scalloped. There's not any really high points. And it's kind of hard to explain what I'm talking about, but most of you guys know what I mean. If this was cut in deeper, so that the space in between each serration was like really fine and skinny and stuff. That's where things really get that get stuck in your serrations, you know, and you, you end up tearing cardboard and, and, you know, plastic. You don't cut straight. Actually, if it, if it kind of grabs and bites, it could go a different direction. Like if you're cutting milk cartons or any kind of thick plastic, you'll be doing a slice. And as you're, you're slicing through... If it gets caught on that, it kind of like skips and it might change the direction of your cut. So you don't have like a straight cut. It, it ends up, you're cutting straight and then boop, and then you're cutting this way and you're trying to auto correct that with your hand and it's all kinds of messed up. So, uh, yeah, overall I like the serration pattern, not my, my favorite. Like I said, if you see this, this little scallop right here, if you just do those, that's totally adequate. You don't need all kinds of funky looking things. It's obviously aggressive looking. It's cool. A lot of people like, 
you know, fully serrated blades because it's extremely aggressive looking, especially in a tactical knife. Um, but as far as like functionality, simple is better with serrations. It really is. And you want rounded ends. You can have big curves, which, you know, is the serrated part of the blade, but you don't need necessarily pointy tips. Those pointy tips are a hindrance in cutting and it's so easy to, uh, um, to grab and tear material as opposed to cut it. So anyway, moving on. The uh, Emerson Wave feature, obviously awesome. If you guys aren't familiar, you can see the pot clip is orientated in a tip up right hand carry position, which is probably the most common way to carry a knife these days by most people, unless you're lefty. Most righties do like uh, tip up. So uh, anyway, but because of this design, obviously you have to carry it like this because when you're drawing the knife out of the pocket, the corner seam on the pocket grabs this little nib or nub, whatever you want to call that. Um, and as you're pulling it out, the momentum, you know, opens that blade fully. You guys have seen this before. It's not news. Maybe two people watching is like, hmm, that's interesting. Just search it, uh, you know, search wave feature, knife wave, and you'll get a crap load of videos. I have some. Everyone who likes knives has a video on the wave feature because it's friggin' awesome. We all love it. It's really good stuff. Um, there's no faster folding knife on the planet, period. There is a uh, very large lanyard hole, which is very nice for the people who are uh, into their lanyards. Very, very cool. So I like that. Pot clip, by the way, is perfect. Um, I did pull the pants a little bit, but no, no surprise. It's very aggressive G10. Um, it didn't wear the pants, so I'm not really concerned all that much. Most of my, my pants, my right pocket is all torn up anyway from all kinds of knives, so not that big of a deal, but you know, it's not super smooth and taking out. Sometimes if you have a full tie or stainless uh, scale that's smooth, there's no texturing, no, no inlays, anything like that, it's super easy to pull out of the pocket, but any kind of you know uh, grip, of course, the, the contact points where this clip goes down, basically you're pinching your pants material, your pocket material between, you know, a tight piece of metal and a very aggressive, you know, G10. So obviously it's going to be grippy. So a little bit of pocket snag. Basically it's smooth, it's smooth, it's smooth. And then right on the end where the, the you know, seam is a little thicker, it pulls my pocket up until, you know, the pressure gives and then it pulls out. But pretty commonplace, not that big of a deal. Obviously you guys see it does have a thumb disc as most Emerson's do. Anyway, I'm a little flip floppy on that, very much like a politician. One day I, I prefer thumb studs, another day I prefer opening holes, whatever. I've never really been a fan of uh, opening discs. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the one knife I used the most that had an opening disc was the uh, Benchmade Striker. I think it was 910. And I love that knife. There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, obviously you see it's fully functional, okay? Grips the thumb, it's really easy to use. It's just a different design, you know? You can still flick this out, totally fine. It, you know, knurled on the side here, so it grips the thumb. So if you wanna give a little flick action, totally fine as long as your, your pivot's loose enough, you know? But there's always that fine line between being loose enough to flick out and making sure there's no blade play, all right? Some knives, it's hard to, to get that balance. But uh, anyway, super ergonomic. Like I said before, super deep finger troll in here. Plus the, the uh, aggressive uh, G10, the little thumb ramp that's naturally created by that Emerson Wave. That's also gymmed here. Just really ergonomic. It feels great. It really does feel great in the hand. And of course, as well as the reverse grip, which again, for some people, in a combative situation, they might prefer you know, knife fighting in the reverse grip. That's a whole different thing. It's not something you can just, you know, if you don't have specific training, in defending yourself in a reverse grip, don't do it because it's ineffective. It has a lot of advantages, but you have to be trained in that specific way of defending yourself. And I say defending because that's all we're talking about. I'm not talking about you know hurting people for no reason. I'm talking about using a knife to defend your life if you ever had to. Um, hopefully you don't. But uh, yeah, don't be you know thinking you're cool just doing this and waiting around and not knowing what you're doing. That'll probably get you killed. So uh, what else can I say? about this awesome knife. Um, 4.8 ounces and honestly it doesn't feel it. It feels lighter than that to me. It feels about three ounces or so. Um, so the weight distribution, whatever, I don't know what it is about it, but it definitely feels lighter than it is. Okay, it doesn't feel like it's almost five ounces. But very cool, I really like it. Um, you know, Ernie Emerson is a badass and uh, 
he's a very cool dude, and he makes really cool knives. And I'm you know proud to say that uh, I'm back in the the Emerson scene. I'm I'm a believer again. Because for a while there, like I said, the work was a little shoddy uh, for the prices, and uh, and now I think, I mean, at least with this example, I think they're they're definitely back in the game. Not that they ever weren't, you know. There's always such a strong cult following of Emerson knives, you know. They they really always made really good designs. It's just they, I think, in the last couple of years, maybe perfected uh, some of the um, you know manufacturing processes. Let's just say um, their their fit and finish is definitely better. The designs were always there, um, you know. The performance was always there, no matter what. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're if you have machining marks here, you know, and your liner was a little bit off center. That didn't change how the knife worked. They've always been great performing knives, you know. But uh, but I just like that the the overall quality has definitely stepped up. Very very cool. So congrats to uh, to Emerson for making even better knives than he made before. So yeah, if you guys are interested, check it out. I'll put a link in the description box um, uh, to this knife and also to the Bulldog so you guys can see it. I want you to see this design. Tell me if you like that knife, if it's something you want me to review because it's, it's kind of, it's very hard. Like if I like a knife, it's hard because I have to trade for it. I don't buy knives. I haven't bought a knife in a long, long time. I have to trade and barter and stuff like that to get stuff to review. Uh, but if you guys are really interested, I, I will try to work out some kind of a trade or something with someone to uh, to get the Bulldog. It looks like an interesting model uh, from Emerson. So, Anyway, that's all. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the review. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.